So now for the curtain, let's make a copy of the edge that represents the window opening. By selecting the edge, shift D to make a copy on the X axis, B to separate. I'm going to make a copy again for this one. Now, we need to know the size of each side of the curtains left turning it. So I'm going to select this edge, right click, subdivide, and select this side, isolate. I'm going to hide this one. So this is a single side of the curtain, and this is where we're going to create our curtain. So normally there's a lots of different ways to create the curtains, and this is one of them. I'm going to select the edge, right click, subdivide. I'm going to put an odd number. So let's put 27 for example, and select all the vertex. Go to select, shift or deselect, and now we're going to push these vertex on the x-axis to give us the curvy shape of that curtain. Select all the vertex and I'm going to deselect the, the one at the end and control shift B to smooth, to smooth this part a little bit. And then exit the isolation mode, select all the edges, extrude up to the flip using the snap feature. So at the moment, this shape doesn't represent actually a realistic curtain because we want to scale this down up to one side. Why didn't I create a single side at the beginning? Because if we created lots of vertex just to make the shape more curvy, it will complicate the simulation uh, of that cloth pattern. So I'm gonna make the origin at this point by moving the 3D cursor to that side. Origin to 3D cursor. And now I'm gonna scale this on the Y axis up to the this point, the single side point. So this is enough. Isolate again. Now we will need to add more signals. So horizontally and Make sure to add another vertex or an edge segments at this side. So whenever we apply the subdivision modifier, we don't get a weird bend shape. All right, so let's select this edge by hitting Alt and Shift, select the other edge and this one. Vertex mode, go to the vertex group and add a vertex group. We're gonna call this non cloth because we don't want this to be part of the coming cloth simulation. Now let's activate the cloth. The idea here is that we wanna create a more clothy shape before we create an animation of the opening and export it to Unreal Engine to apply the cloth uh, physics. Because if you keep your shape at this current stage, it look 100% normalized and doesn't meet the reality shape of that uh, of that curtain. So inside the cloth physics properties, I'm gonna make the vertex mass to one. I'm gonna make it linear because basically we're pushing it down. And for the structure, let's increase it a little bit to 20 and here also to 10 and the up. Now we want to apply a pressure just at, at the beginning, so we're going to deactivate it like maybe the first 10 frame and then inside the shape we don't want to forget to include the non-cloth vertex and let's have also a collision quality to 10 minimize the collision object just in case we want to add any collision object double zero to minimize the self collision now the simulation will end at 250, but we want to increase this to 500 to give it enough keyframe to give us enough simulation. So also apply a modifier of a subdivision surface. Let's keep it at a one at this moment, and then let's hit simulate. So what's going to happen now is that the faces is flipped. So we need to see the face orientation. This is a common feature that we always need to check. So Alt N to reflip or recalculate all the faces orientation. And now let's also close the wireframe. Apply a shade smooth and 
let's start the simulation and let's close the pressure so you can keep trying to do the simulation just to get a straight shape of that curtain and you can even add a, a wind for example to just push these element a little bit but for now we'll just keep this simple for the sake of this tutorial so I think something like that will do the job just to have this kind of an end so I'm gonna apply now the load modifier and now let's animate this with an opening before we export it to Unreal Engine so I'm gonna make the frame this time to 200 frames and let's do an opening animation so in the object properties what we want to do is that we want to scale that curtain to be to simulate the opening on the y-axis so before that we want to apply a scale to that object and then let's delete this keyframe at this stage and activate keyframing on the y-axis and when we reach 200 keyframe we're going to make the opening let's say for example at this amount and now we have our work curtain opening like that next let's start now the the export process we will export the curtains once you finish all of them uh, separately from the the room elements so I'm gonna hide this and then we don't need this because it's just for reference so we have it already inside our engine and for these objects we will export them as a data smith because there is no animation for them at the moment I do believe that still uh, data smith doesn't support skeletal mesh so we will export the curtain as an FBX to Unreal Engine. You can do that by going to export and then selected objects only. Apply the unit and as you can see it will export with the Y axis up and then inside the Unreal Engine we will flip that to minus 90. And for the geometry let's make the smoothing to face and the armature to rule. Add leaf bones, we don't need that. And we will deselect the NLS strip because we want only one FBX to have one skeletal mesh. Now, I also prefer to, before we export, to apply the subdivision. So the modifier is already applied and, and we avoid any complication. So I'm gonna move to Unreal Engine where we exported our master bedroom and the curtains. Now inside Unreal Engine, when we import our FBX curtain, the pop-up options, we will select Skeletal Mesh to create a Skeletal Mesh for that curtain. Take the Import Animation with Exported Time option and for the Import Rotation, put the Z to negative 90. Now the idea here for that is that the animation that was done inside blender was done on the y-axis so we can actually flip the export rotation because it will mess up the animation inside our image so the best solution for that is to put the z to negative 90. and now we have our skeletal mesh with the animation and the physics assets now before dragging this curtain into our scene we'll create a blueprint class because we want to create an actor to be able to interact with this curtain so I'm going to call this curtain and inside the actor I'm going to add a skeletal mesh and select our skeletal mesh curtain and then assign it in the asset. Now and then we will drag it into our scene. Now we already did that before so we will start now with the cloth property. So we have our curtain here added into our scene, into our level as an actor. Now let's see how we're gonna create the cloth simulation. So let's apply a cloth effect to this curtain. Right click, create cloth 
data from selection and then let's activate the cloth paint once we do that and select the clothing data we'll head to the paint value put this to the highest let's say for example to 1000 and maybe increase the size of the radius to something like 50 now the idea here is that we want to paint the whole curtain first to make sure that all the vertex have cloth properties so in simulation everything will move except for the upper part where the curtain normally hangs. Let's put the paint value to zero, reduce the size for eight for example, and let's zoom in on one. And let's start painting on this area. So let's deactivate the paint and right click apply clothing data which is the one we just created we'll start to see some simulation happening to the vertex and if we move our animation slider this will help us see how the animation is going and if this is what we're looking for or not now this is the best practice that you can review your clothing properties before saving and going to your game you can always go back of course to set up it but it's good to review it here and fix your settings and fix your settings also if you hover your mouse here you'll find that the total mass is distributed equally over all the particles so this is actually better in our case let's put the value for example to one we also have some other properties such as collision we will activate the self collision now once we activate this you'll start to see all the vertex interacting together and we want to put the self collision value to the minimum let's say 0.005 for example all right so now if we start dragging again we can see now there's a better simulation happening to the curtain now there is also the gravity we can set up the gravity to something like two for example and let's see how this affects a little bit you can see now that this part is now being pulled down much stronger than before you can always increase the gravity but it doesn't have that much of good effect over your simulation so we prefer to put it at 2 for now now we can also activate the use self intersection also to help and getting more collision and now something that worth mentioning the subdivision count this is basically increasing the subdivision quality of your mesh. Putting this value, for example, to five, you'll find that your mesh now is becoming more heavier. Now, it's not advisable actually to adjust this to a higher value than one, because it will affect also your frame rate and your memory will be more or less and you'll face really slower performance in the game. Another thing that we can adjust also, the animation properties. We can increase the stiffness a little bit in the animation and review our curtain if, it, if this is something that we are looking for or not. Maybe this fit another example such as some curtains inside an office or something, but it's always better to have a little bit of flexibility and and home curtains I guess keeping this value at zero will be much better let's also increase the drag value over here and this will help us achieve a better more realistic drag effect for this curtain so if you put this value let's say 0.2 
you'll start to see the curtain move with unrealistic wave along the curtain. So it's better to keep this value, for example, at the highest. And this will definitely help us achieve a better effect. So let's save and move to the next part. Now it's time to create our widget to control this curtain. So let's create a widget from user interface. I call this, for example, curtain control. And let's add a canvas first. And then add a slider. Over here, for example, increase the size a little bit. Let's change the bar thickness to something bigger, like this, for example. And let's minimize the opacity a little bit. So I've got the alpha over here to 0.6, for example, or maybe 0.3. So we need to set up the minimum value and the maximum value. And this is where we're going to get it from our animation data. So if we go to our skeleton mission side, our actor, inside the animation mode, you'll find initial position. And this is represent the maximum value of this animation. So we're going to take a copy of this value and put the minimum to zero. So minimum value is zero and the maximum value is the same value inside our actor. Let's add a text, for example. And call this text curtain test. Come by. Now it's time to add the blueprint that will control this curtain. So choose your slide bar and go to the graph. Now our slide here, once on value changed, we will first want to get our actor. So get all actor of class. And this is the way to interact with your level actor. Our actor is inside that level, so we need to interact with it. And this is how we are gonna reach it first. So I'm gonna select this actor. And then get a copy from that. This is really helpful in terms if in case you have multiple copies of that actor. And then we want to set the animation mode. If we look at our actor, we want to basically reach this particular properties of that actor, the animation mode. So what we're going to do is set animation mood for that skeleton mesh and the useful thing is that it took a copy from the target this is gonna make our job much easier so our animation mode is an asset because we already imported this from blender next we want to control the initial position so we're gonna set position we look for the skeletal mesh part and here is our component set the animation we want to connect the same target that we have from this actor i'm gonna add a map ranged clamped and we're gonna put the b value the same one that we had from our widget and connect it over here and that's it. Next, we need our widget to be visible inside our level once we hit play. So I'm gonna select the widget blueprint and inside level blueprint, I'm gonna assign it over here. So curtain control at viewport and set the mouse cursor to all. So if we hit play, let's now test the widget and see how this is going to affect our curtain. I will start to see the position of the animation is moving along the slider that we created inside the widget. 
This is really helpful if you want to also open doors or windows or anything related to a, an opposition determined by an animation or a deformation created in Blender or any other software. So hope you guys find this useful for your projects and thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please share it down in the comments. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.